pay any attention to the news, you're seeing a lot of crap about Florida. Florida is what used to be a red state, a purple state, on its way to becoming blue. Joe Biden's leading in the polls. He's going to take Florida. He's going to win the election. He's leading in the polls in Florida. One or two points, Nate Silver, three, four, five, six, some of the other polls. But what's really happening? I'm going to explain to you what's happening right now in Florida in this video. And I'm going to explain to you why Donald Trump is going to carry the state and win the election. To understand, you have to go back to 2008. Barack Obama versus John McCain. Barack Obama won Florida by about 200,000 votes, a little bit more. Wow, impressive. But here's the dirty little secret. In 2008, when registrations ended, right before the election in October, as they just did here this year, the other day, Democrats led Republicans in party registration by 700,000 votes. So why, what happened to the other 500,000 Democrats? How did John McCain get within a quarter of a million votes when his party was out-registered by 700,000? That's something the Democrats didn't really address. Because what it means is, although the Democrats won, a lot of them must have voted for McCain. Means the Democrats in Florida are pretty conservative. We're also with the unaffiliated voters, the independents and the other party registrations, also must have voted for John McCain. Otherwise, Barack Obama would have won by 700,000 votes if he just split the independents from McCain. He would have won by almost three quarters of a million votes. That's what should have happened, and it didn't. Let's jump ahead to 2012. Barack Obama's re-election, Mitt Romney, the pathetic Republican candidate. She thought he should have done much better. Barack Obama won Florida again. Now, this time he won by about 73,000 votes. So he, he lost almost 200,000 votes somewhere along the way. Now you can explain half of that because the Republicans had narrowed the registration gap from 700,000 to 600,000. But that's still, there's still another 100,000 out there somewhere that Barack Obama lost or people didn't show up at the polls or something happened. But the Democrats really didn't talk about that. We just kept hearing Florida's a purple state now. Maybe it's going to be red. And you have all these northerners, all these liberals moving in. I mean, we, I've been here in Florida all the time. Oh, you know, you see t-shirts, you know, liberals come here from the north and they bring their liberal policies with them and their higher taxes and blah, 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 blah. And it's sort of like a, a folk tale that as all these people flee New York and New Jersey and Pennsylvania and Illinois and other places and come to Florida, they're all liberals and they're all registered Democrats and they're all going to vote blue. It ain't true. It ain't true. It's not happening. And you can see that if you pay attention to the registration figures. So that was 2012. Let's jump ahead. 2016. Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama's third term, some would say, against this newcomer, this television host, this businessman, Donald Trump. Surely Hillary's going to take the state. Obama took it. Twice. It's a purple state now. It's going to be a blue state. Hillary's going to win. Paul Schoer, Hillary, way out ahead. Blah, 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 blah. Hillary's got the election locked up. 97% chance, 94% chance, 99% chance. Hillary can't lose to Trump, and she's going to take Florida. I was here then. I heard it all. I saw it all. But I didn't see it on the ground. And I didn't see it when I looked at the registration numbers. What had happened in the intervening four years from 2012 to 2016? Republicans had further narrowed the registration gap. 
700,000 in 2008, 600,000 in 2012, 400,000 in uh, 2016. So basically the Democrats, the shift between Republicans and Democrats since 2008 to 2016 was 300,000 voters. 300,000 voters. That's a lot of votes. That's more votes than Barack Obama carried the state with in 2008. It's about four times what he carried the state with in 2012. So going into 2016, one might very well have concluded that Hillary Clinton had a tough job ahead of her. You know, forget the polls. Just look at the trends, the registration trends. Yes, the population is getting bigger, but the idea that all these people are coming in and registering as, as Democrats is just bull. It's not true. It can't be true, or the numbers wouldn't keep changing the way they are. Either that or... Democrats just keep re-registering as Republicans, and that's not happening. So what happens in 2016? Donald Trump carries the state by something like 110,000 votes. So in four years from Obama's re-election in 2012 to 2016, they had gone from winning by 73,000 to losing by a little like 113,000, I think it was. So basically, the Democrats lost another 200,000 votes. Why? Well, look at party registration. Since 2008, it dropped 300,000 votes. So if you look at the party registrations, you might well have concluded, now, you know, I'm not Nate Silver. I'm not this, you know, whiz kid with polls. But if you just looked at party registrations and you looked at what happened in 2008 and 2012, you might have thought in 2016, as I did, that Hillary's going to have a tough time winning the state. And she didn't win. She lost by 100,000 votes, which is pretty much what the math would suggest. You don't need a poll. You don't need polls to look at registration numbers. So what's happened in the previous four years? That's next. Okay, it's October 2012. It's the 17th evening of the 17th as I film this. It probably won't get out until the 18th. Registration has closed. The polls show Biden ahead. Nate Silver has him like two points. Some of the others are one, some are three, four, five. I think I saw one that was seven, I think. Neck and neck in Florida. Maybe. But let's go back and look at the trend. 2008, 2012, 2016, 2020. What's the difference in party registration today? Just the other day, I think Friday, it closed. It's 200,000. Remember, it was 700,000 to, to, to uh, 2008. Democrats had an advantage over Republicans of 700,000 registered voters. They had 600,000 advantage in 2012. They had a 400,000 advantage in 2016. And now they have a 200,000 advantage in 2020. Now, now, keep this in mind. There have been about, since 2008, there have been about 2 million new voters have moved into Florida. And along that time, the Democrats lost their 500,000 of their 700,000 edge. And over that same period, about half the people who moved into the state are registered as unaffiliated, independents, you know, whatever, little, little parties, not Republicans or Democrats. So basically, a million people have moved into the state and registered for one or the other of the two major parties. And of those million people, 500,000 extra joined the Republicans. So basically, if you look at all the people who moved into the state since 2008 to 2020, who have not registered as independents, which is about a million people. And you look at how the number of registered Democrats has declined vis-a-vis -vis Republicans. Narrowed, I should say, rather than declined. It means that of the million voters who have moved into Florida over the last 12 years and registered for one of the two major parties, 750,000 voted registered as Republicans, 250,000 registered as Democrats. Republicans, people move, the people moving into the state are registering 50% as independents and the other 50% are split 
three to one for Republicans. In other words, the state's not getting bluer. The state's not even getting more purple. The state is getting redder. And this is a 12-year trend. This isn't something that happened you know, over, over the last couple of years. This is 12 years. That's a lot of time. So the, the idea that you hear all the time, that, you know, all the people, and I, I, yeah, I, said, I hear this in Florida, all these people moving in are, are liberals, bringing their crap from Pennsylvania, New York, and New Jersey. That's not true. If they were liberals in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, they're registering here as independents or as Republicans, not as Democrats. Democrats are losing the registration fight. They are losing the registration fight, big time. Basically, compared to 2008, when Barack Obama won by a quarter of a million votes, not quite, almost a quarter of a million votes, they've lost 500,000 voters in their registration edge. That's twice what Barack Obama won by in 2008. It's eight times what he won by in 2012. And if you just look at the registration numbers and the difference between Barack Obama winning by uh, 73,000 in 2012 and Hillary Clinton losing by a little over 110,000 in 2016, almost 200,000 vote difference, you can see it all in the registration numbers. And they're even worse this time. They've gone from 700,000 in 2008, 600,000 in 2012, 400,000 in 2016, 200,000 this time. There's a trend there, a 12-year trend, and it's not a good trend for the Democrats. So it, just looking at that, you might think, how in the hell can Joe Biden win this state? And you might think, well, oh, oh, Republicans are, are just independents. They're all sick of Trump. So they're all going to vote for Biden. But remember, if you look at the numbers from 2016 when Trump was elected until today, and the Republicans have shaved half of that gap away from minus 400,000 to minus 200,000, that doesn't make any sense. Why would, if people are sick of Trump, why would they be registering as Republicans at a three to one ratio? If anything, it makes it look like they're sick of the Democrats and they're registering three to one for the Republicans. Or they're sick of both parties and they're registering as independents, which about half of the new people coming in have done. But still, if you look at this gap and how it's closed since 2008, the prospects of the Democrats winning in Florida in 2020 look like slim to none. You know, there was an almost 200,000 vote switch from Obama's victory to Hillary Clinton's loss. And they've lost another 200,000 registered voter edge along the way. So if you just look at the trend, one would expect Donald Trump to carry Florida by between 250 and 350,000 votes. In other words, it's not going to be close. Not close enough to delay the results for mail-in ballots or anything like that. That's not going to happen. I mean, since 2008, they've lost 500,000 registered voter edge. How do you make that up? That's a lot. When, when voting, you know, if you look at the last three elections, they were decided by 113,000, 73,000, 240,000. How do you make up a 500,000 registered voter deficit when the state's been, those have been the margins in the state for the last 12 years? That doesn't make any sense. The numbers don't add up. I don't care what the polls say. I don't know who they're talking to. But as I've said in other videos, I've driven across this state as I did four years ago, right before the election. I can count signs. I can see enthusiasm. I see the sides of crowds. It was the same, same thing I'm seeing this time that I saw in 2016. You know, appalling crowds for the Democrats. They had to, I've mentioned this before, they had to, a, a, a car rally, vehicle rally for Biden. I saw it on the news and I watched. And then I replayed it. It was 15 vehicles. They had the Hispanics, Latinos for Trump parade, vehicle parade in Miami. 
30,000 vehicles. And these are just Hispanics. This isn't like everybody in the state. This was just their parade in Miami. You say, well, they're all Cubans. Yeah, maybe they were, I don't know. A lot of Puerto Ricans have moved into the state and, and other Dominicans and others. And, you know, maybe Biden will do better with them. Maybe he won't. Obama did better than Clinton with Hispanics. You know, I don't know what's going to happen this time. But that really doesn't matter. If you look at the state as a whole and you look at the registration numbers, they tell me Biden's going to lose by between 250 and 350,000. In other words, it's not going to be close. Now, I could be dead wrong. Maybe Nate Silver knows a lot more than I do. Maybe they can dig down into the numbers better than I can. But again, I think if you just look at the registration numbers, you look at the results going back to 2008, and you look at the trends, that's what it looks like to me. And the polls can be damned. I just don't see it. And it's not just that, it's reinforced by the enthusiasm I see around here. Anyway, that's my take on the ground here in Florida. I don't know, what are we, three weeks from the election? Two weeks from the election, two and a half weeks, something like that. That's what I'm seeing. That's what the numbers are telling me. Again, I'm not a pollster. I'm not doing polls. I'm just looking at registration. And if I was a Democrat and I saw our party registration surplus shrink in 12 years, from 700,000 to 200,000. And over that same period, we had never won an election by more than 240,000. I would be very worried. I would suspect that I'm gonna lose. That's my opinion. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Uh, if you like the video, got something out of it, hit, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel, hit the notification button so you know when I post new videos. Share it with your friends. I know there's a lot of people out there on the right who are getting worried with all these polls. Oh my God, what's going to happen? Are the Democrats going to win? Well, I don't think they're going to win in Florida. So you can assure them, share this video with them. And as I usually end these videos, you know, stand tall, stand firm. Don't be afraid. Don't panic. Show up and vote. And always keep fighting.